fighting females. The only thing holding back Mary Calm from winning everything over the last 15 years is that women's boxing has yet to create the things for her to win. She began her run of success at 18 with a silver at the first boxing world championship to feature a women's competition. She then proceeded to dominate the 46 and 48 kilo divisions, winning five straight golds at the world championships and three at the Asian championships. She was unquestionably the best boxer in her division, but her prospects were limited by a complete lack of competition. There was no professional path for women her size, and neither the Olympics or Commonwealth Games offered women's boxing at all. That changed in 2012 when the London Olympics became the first ever to offer a women's competition. But Combs' usual division wasn't included. So she moved up to flyweight, the 51 kilo limit. She came under intense pressure, despite being one of the smallest in the competition. She lived up to expectations, taking home the bronze against her oversized competition. Shortly after, she took some time away from the ring to give birth to her third child but she couldn't stay away for long. Honestly, uh, obviously, this is my passion, actually. I have already achieved everything, but uh, my passion, passion is bring me back. It was a stunningly successful comeback as Calm won gold at the Commonwealth Games and an unprecedented sixth gold medal at the World Championships. Magnificent Mary is an icon in her home country, the most successful boxer in Indian history, and even became a member of parliament in 2016. Had there been more competition for her to take part in, who knows how high her achievements could have been. Of all the sports the United States excelled in at the Olympics, judo was not one. At least it wasn't until Kayla Harrison came along. But when she did, America suddenly got very good at judo indeed. Harrison started her run at the 2010 World Championships, winning the first gold for her country there in over a decade. Two years later, she was ready for her biggest challenge, the London Olympic Games. If I don't win the Olympics, I'll definitely go for 2016, yeah. but I plan on winning it. Kayla won gold, becoming the first American man or woman to win Olympic gold in judo in history. I did it. <laughs> and uh, I just, I, I, don't, I don't think words can describe it. You know, it's, I think this is the happiest I'll ever feel in my life. I'm, I'm walking on, on clouds right now. My feet haven't touched the ground yet. Despite the victory, or perhaps because of it, Harrison decided to double down and go for a second gold at Rio 2016. She won again and discovered that there are levels to joy. Yeah, I don't know that words can really describe it. It's, uh, it's almost unbelievable. Like, I thought being the first American to win a gold medal, I thought that that high, that there would never be anything to top it, but I was wrong. Being two-time Olympic champion tops it for sure. Having conquered the highest level possible in her sport, Harrison was at a crossroads. She could continue to dominate the judo circuit or diversify her skill set and make a run at professional fighting in MMA. She chose the latter. At 165 pounds, Harrison competes at welterweight, a size that not many professional MMA promotions offer for women. But she has joined American Top Team and secured a place with the Pro Fighter League where she has continued in her successful ways. She may have to wait a while for fight promotions like the UFC to find enough women her size, but if her history tells us anything about Kayla Harrison, it's that she has no problem being the first. Many female fighters have found themselves being the first in various areas recently, as the sport grows into its overdue legitimacy. But the career of our number eight, Nicola Adams, contains more firsts than usual. She was the first female boxer to represent England, one of the first female amateur boxing champions, the first English woman to medal at a major competition with silver at the European Championships, and then, at the 2012 London Olympics, the first ever gold medal in women's boxing. It's still, you know, all sinking in. I, I just can't believe what I've, what I've achieved today. You know, it's, it's a, definitely a childhood dream come true. 
She was one of three English boxing gold medalists at that event, along with Luke Campbell and future unified heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. And the achievement earned her an MBE, but Adams was just getting started. Over the next four years, she racked up another gold at the EU Amateurs, the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, and the European Games in Baku, where she carried her country's flag. Yeah, oh, my mum's absolutely overwhelmed with joy. Not everybody gets to gets the opportunity to lead the whole of Team GB into the into the stadium for the opening ceremony. So um, I'm really honoured and excited. But her best was yet to come. In 2016, she won her first gold at the Amateur Championship, followed by gold at the 2016 Rio Olympics, making her the first dual gold medal winning female boxer in history. Having conquered all that the amateur world could throw at her, Adams finally decided to go professional, eventually becoming the first female boxer to be signed by legendary English promoter Frank Warren. I'm, I'm here eating humble pie today because I've not been the greatest advocate of uh, women's boxing, but we're here today because uh, my head's been turned for the fantastic achievements that uh, this young lady has done in the sport. She's had a winning start to her professional career, going 5-0 and and winning the interim WBO flyweight title in her first two years. But with so many achievements under her belt already, it's understandable that Adams isn't rushing her professional success. I don't want to, I don't want to go too, too fast. I'd love to be able to say, yeah, I want to go for it and the, um, go for a title shot in my second fight, but I'm going to take my, take my time. When Joanna Young Georgic debuted with the UFC in 2014, there was only one female fighter's name on anyone's lips. No one was really looking twice at the undefeated Polish fighter with the unpronounceable surname. In an effort to help everyone out, she suggested they call her Joanna Champion instead. She lived up to the name. Within two fights, young Joyjack had earned a shot at champion Carla Esparza, who she absolutely dismantled to become only the second strawweight champ and the first Polish champ in UFC history. By the end of her title run, Joanna had landed three times more significant strikes than any woman in UFC history, landed the most significant strikes in title fights, delivered the second and third most significant strikes in single bouts, she also had the top four strike differentials in title fights and the most leg kicks in a single bout. She was violence personified inside the cage, but outside it, her public profile was more focused on sneakers, Polish cooking, and a surprising love of Christmas. When Joanna's run at the top was brought to an end by an incredible performance from Rose Namajunas, she had racked up more time in the cage than any woman before her, and equaled Ronda Rousey's title fight win record. No one has had trouble with her name since. Won every fight she's ever fought. She is pound for pound the best woman fighter in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the undisputed welterweight world champion. She's got every belt undefeated, Cecilia Brickhouse. Cecilia Brakehus has had an historic career, not just by the standards of women's boxing, but the sport of boxing overall. She's reached the absolute pinnacle of her sport, all while the sport was illegal in her home country. The Norwegian welterweight began her boxing career in 2007, and in just over two years was an 11-0 champion with two welterweight belts. Just over a year later, she had won her third. Her final major title came in 2014, when the now 26-0 Breakers beat Ivana Habazan for the IBF title. In doing so, she became only the third four-belt undisputed boxing champion in history and the first woman to achieve the feat. She followed in the footsteps of Bernard Hopkins, who, like her, collected all four belts, belt by belt, to become the undisputed champion seven years prior. Unfortunately for Breakers, all of her monumental achievements had taken place in Denmark and Germany as women's boxing was still banned in her adopted home country of Norway. In 2016, thanks primarily to Cecilia's success, that changed and she was able to hold her first fight in front of her home fans. What? 
I'm very proud, of course, and uh, I'm very happy because this is also um, something we, we couldn't be, um, uh, we, we, we couldn't show to the rest of the world. It's, it was a little bit embarrassing. It's my honest opinion. And, uh, but now it's, of course, the most important thing is that everything is doing the right way in Norway. There was a time when Ronda Rousey was the biggest name in sport. She beat Serena Williams at the ESPYs for Sportswoman of the Year. She beat Floyd Mayweather at the ESPYs for Fighter of the Year. And Business Insider named her the most dominant athlete on the planet. Not fighter, athlete. But how did she achieve all of that? When the president of the UFC, Dana White, at one stage went on record stating that no woman will ever fight in the UFC. Just check out these title fight stats. The first female UFC champion has the longest title fight finish streak in UFC history with six. The most title defenses by a woman in UFC history with six, and the fastest women's title fight victory in UFC history at just 14 seconds. What Rousey did as the UFC's inaugural women's champ was nothing short of astonishing and likely never to be repeated. But we shouldn't just compare her UFC title stats to the women. Her 14-second finish was the fastest submission in a title fight bar none. And it was the second fastest finish behind only Conor McGregor's 13-second knockout of Jose Aldo. She also has the fourth fastest finish at 16 seconds, the second most submission wins with three, and the fifth most defenses with six. Her championship pedigree more than competes with the men no matter how you slice it. But we're still just looking at title fights. If you include everything up to her first loss, there is truly no one like her. She started her career with a 12-0 record. 11 of those fights she won in the first round. Nine of those she finished by armbar. Eight of those were in promotional title fights. And included in this period were six post-fight performance bonuses. And what does all of that add up to? Rousey's rightful place as the first female inductee into the UFC Hall of Fame. To understand why Amanda Nunez goes above Ronda Rousey, we have to look back into the annals of combat. First, to John Jones, who before he was the champ was an up and coming monster of the UFC's light heavyweight division, finishing challengers and journeymen alike until he got his first title shot in 2011. That was against the multi promotional champion and MMA legend, Shogun Hua and Jones demolished him to take the belt and cement his reputation as someone to be feared. In 2008, Manny Pacquiao had claimed every title he wanted and the position as pound-for-pound pound best boxer on the planet. And his next challenge? The former pound-for-pound pound champ and boxing royalty Oscar De La Hoya, who was on the comeback trail after losing his belt more than a year before. Pacquiao brutalized the Golden Boy so completely that De La Hoya retired from the sport altogether and headed for a less violent way of making money from professional combat. And in 1974, the heavyweight champ George Foreman was the baddest man on the planet, a wrecking machine who routinely put all comers to the canvas with a brutal regularity. Right up, did the job. But a smaller man with a counterculture reputation by the name of Muhammad Ali stepped up to get the title. And against all odds, he sent the monster to the canvas and took the belt. Well, Amanda Nunez is John Jones, Manny Pacquiao, and Muhammad Ali all in one. When Amanda Nunez first won the UFC's bantamweight title, she did it against the multi-promotional champion and MMA legend Misha Tate, and Nunez demolished her in the first round. When Nunez defended the belt against the former women's pound-for-pound pound champ and MMA icon Ronda Rousey, Nunez sent her into retirement in professional wrestling.
And when Nunez moved up a division to face the featherweight champ and baddest woman on the planet, Chris Cyborg, Nunez sent the monster to the canvas and took the belt. Three title fights, three icons of women's combat, and three first round annihilations puts Nunez at number four on the all time list. Our number three is an Irish fighting star who has dominated everyone in the last three years to become an absolute champion of their sport. And no, we're not talking about this guy. The Irish are back. We've taken back control of New York City. I run New York City. I'm a pimp, rocking Gucci mink. And without me, this whole ship sink. We're talking about Katie Taylor the softly spoken boxer with a mile of class and all of the ability she needs to stay at the top of her division for years. I am a very quiet person, but in the ring, that's where I feel the most alive, I guess. And um, I just want to be the best out there. I want to be the greatest of all time, really. And um, I want to make history in my sport, and I've always, I've always wanted that. Um, so, yeah, I've got big, big dreams. One of the most successful female amateurs to ever get in the ring, Taylor holds a near-perfect championship record with an Olympic gold, five worlds, six European golds, another five EU golds, and a European Games gold as well. She may not have followed Nicola Adams and Clarissa Shields to become the third woman to win back-to-back -back Olympic gold, but her disappointment was rapidly forgotten when she went pro. She tore through the lightweight ranks, rushing to become a 13-0 three-belt champion and becoming a mainstay at venues like the O2 and Madison Square Garden, sharing the card with fellow Olympian Anthony Joshua. Her whole professional run had taken less than three years, and Taylor was never anything but class both in the ring and out, even on the eve of the biggest challenge of her career against Belgian champion Delphine Persson. Yeah, definitely. Um, Delphine Persson is a fantastic champion, and this is exactly what boxing needs. This is champion against champion, the best versus, versus the best. And um, this is what, not just what women's boxing needs, this is what boxing needs. It turned out that boxing needed Katie Taylor, as she scraped through a brutally close 10 rounds against Persson with a majority decision and became the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. By comparison, in that same span of time, McGregor had gone 0-1 in both boxing and MMA, content to merely take part and leaving Katie Taylor to take over. Nicola Adams was a dual Olympic champion, and Cecilia Breakhouse absolutely dominated her division. But our number two, America's Clarissa Shields, did both. She kicked off her career with back-to-back -back Olympic gold medals at London and Rio, becoming only the second woman in history and the first American of either gender to do so. I think it's great. You know, winning these two Olympic gold medals wasn't easy. Now, hold on, 2016 was pretty easy, I have to say. Now, got to give myself the credit for that. But 2012 definitely wasn't easy. 2016 was like a walk in the park. She went pro as soon as she returned from Brazil clear-eyed that she would have to work twice as hard to make it in her chosen career as her male counterparts. I feel like I have a harder job to do than the men as far as in boxing goes. They have a platform already. They know that you can go pro and not have an amateur background and where to go. But for women, I'm building the platform, you know? And then I, not only with building the platform, I have to fight too, and I have to look good. And working hard is exactly what she did winning titles in nearly every fight. She picked up a minor middleweight title in only her second fight and a minor super middleweight belt in her third. Her first majors, two super middleweight straps, came in her fifth fight. She became a dual division champion in only her sixth fight, beating Lomachenko's record by one fight. In only seven fights, she was the reigning WBA, IBF, and WBC middleweight champion, with five other belts in the closet and she knew exactly what she wanted to do next. People still saying that I'm not the greatest one of all time. When I beat Christina Hammer on Saturday, everybody in here, every news station, every reporter, everybody that ever doubted me, I want your heading to be 
shields, nails, the hammer. Because she's gonna get nailed. With her one-sided 10-round victory over Christina Hammer, Clarissa Shields became the fastest four-belt undisputed champion in boxing history and an all-time legend of the sport. All of the women on our list are champions either in boxing or MMA. Becoming a champ in either sport is one of the most difficult things a human being can do, which is why no one, male or female, has ever been a champion in both. No one except for Holly Holm. After a short but successful amateur kickboxing career, Holm began her boxing career in 2002 and began stockpiling wins like a doomsday prepper. In her 11-year career, she only lost two of her 38 fights, and one of those was a stoppage due to a cut. She won nearly every title available at welter, light welter, and middleweight, and was named Female Fighter of the Year by Ring Magazine in 2005 and 2006. Arguably the best boxer of her time, Holm was still fighting on small cards at the Route 66 Casino in her hometown of Albuquerque. Meanwhile, fighters like Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate were fighting in front of packed stadiums and fronting magazines and red carpets. So Holm jumped codes. She joined the UFC as a raw 7-0 bantamweight and proceeded to be fine. But Ronda Rousey had cleaned out the division. So Holm found herself fast-tracked to a title shot. And in one of the most famous bouts in UFC history, Holly handed Rousey her first defeat, claiming the title in her new sport. I'd be very proud of the accomplishment. Why wouldn't I be? It's something that no female's ever been able to do, much less a female that's come from the boxing world. This is a whole new, uh, a whole new career for me. I started a whole new career at 30. The preacher's daughter may have been the first to do it, but she was pretty sure she wouldn't be the last. I feel like fighting is, it's the oldest sport in the book and it's always gonna be evolving. People are gonna be wanting to, if you have the fighter in you, whether it's MMA, boxing, whatever it is, I feel like it's gonna be, you know, something that's always gonna be intriguing for people. They wanna, you know, follow whatever it is. So there might be more crossovers, you know, uh, in the future, so we'll see. Holly Holm's successes are legendary and have ensured she will always have a legacy in the fight game. But as her coach says, her legacy may run deeper than just her record. Holly's on. She's come to a whole new level. People are seeing how strong she is. She's a good person. She's brought a whole new market to MMA as a whole. And we have moms now that want their daughters to grow up and be like Holly. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you want more fight sports in your life, just hit the subscribe button.